Did you know that 80% of the ocean is still undiscovered? Today we're making it 79%. Welcome to Hive Mind Unlimited. What's up, Hive Minders? Today we're doing a good old fashioned reaction video. We're gonna go deep sea diving. We're putting on scuba suits and we're gonna see a bunch of creatures that we cannot believe exist. <laughs> DJ Grant has hand selected a bunch of creatures from the underworld that he wants us to see. First, we're gonna see videos of them and then we're gonna learn facts about them. We're all kind of sea creatures when you think about it. Because we have eyes, yeah. First beast, <laughs> we've got glass octopus. The glass octopus. Look at this thing. It looks like it's made out of glass. Looks like a bong. It actually does look like something you would see at a head shop. Yep. Maybe. You'd be like, how do you smoke this? And the guy's like, oh, let me show you. <laughs> you gotta load the tentacles with your favorite bud. I like to do a sativa in one arm and some indicas in the other. You wrap your mouth around its little brain and then suck your freedom right out of it. <laughs> Cool, how much is it? And he's like, $67,000. All right, let's see this thing in action. Oh, shit. Oh, it just floats there. Damn. It is very majestic. Wow. Whoa. Oh, my gosh. Those are its eggs. It looks like one of those, uh, what are the, a planetarium. Yeah. It looks like a planetarium ceiling. I wish there was like a little fish in the head of the octopus, like driving it. Yeah. Like it looks like a little cockpit or something. <laughs> like there's a little guy in there moving it around. <laughs> it's just his job. Yeah. He's like, yeah, I got had to pick up work for the city, you know. I drive the glass <laughs> octopus in the Atlantic Ocean now. <laughs> yeah. It's not my dream job, but it works. Yeah. It pays good, the bills. Yeah, good insurance and I get to devour snails all day. All right, let's read some facts. It's found in tropical and subtropical water from the surface surface to 3,300 feet deep. Wow. Since they are translucent, when they swim, they try to maintain their digestive gland in a vertical position, minimizing shadows below them to avoid predators. Ugh. They feed on mollusks and crustaceans and grow to be around 4.3 inches in length. Oh my God, they're tiny. They're little dudes. I thought they were big. Yeah, it zooms in on them. That makes them way cooler. I was about to say, who are their predators? They seem like the predator, yeah. but now, oh my gosh, you could hold one in your hand like this. Yeah. You could have a tank with one in it. That's bigger than my, uh, never mind. Bigger than what? <laughs> Nothing, they're just like bigger than probably like some fish and stuff like that. It's average. Yeah, it seems like it's average. It's close to average. It's not <laughs> Maybe a little thing. above. It's about how they swim anyway. They look like good swimmers. Yeah. Next one? Yeah. I hope they get uglier. <laughs> Sea bunny. <laughs> what is this thing? Does it have a face? I like that they obviously found earth bunnies first. Right. Because they saw the they saw the ears on this thing yeah. and they're like, that's a sea bunny. Hey, look, it's a little rabbit. It's like a caterpillar and a rabbit had a baby. Without those ears, it does look like a penis, too. <gasps> Oh, yep, yeah, it crawls like a caterpillar, just as I suspected. It looks like a well-roasted marshmallow. <laughs> Damn. Oh, it really has a personality, though. Despite not having a face, I really feel like it does have some sort of personality. Where are you getting that personality from? I don't know, it wiggled its ears. <laughs> it, it's cute. It is cute. Yeah. But being cute's not a personality trait. I learned that the hard way. I'm still learning that. Stop. I have to impress people with my words that I say, apparently. <laughs> Found throughout the Indo-Pacific Ocean from South Africa to the Central Pacific, the two ears on the head are called rhinophores, <laughs> which are used as sensors. They live between a few months to one year and don't have to worry about predators due to being toxic from the sponges they feed on. Whoa, so their diet protects them. Yes. That's interesting. That's like butterflies. There's some other things like that. It's like my old college roommate, too. His diet protected him? Yeah. Oh. Whew. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, you wanted to stay away from it. Mm -hmm. yeah. I also think it's funny that the ears are called rhinophores, but they still went with sea bunny. Yeah. Like, it's not it's not a sea rhinoceros. It's way too small. I'm going to need one. Yeah, one horn. They grow to be about 2.5 centimeters in length and also happen to be the cutest fucking thing I've ever seen. <laughs> See, Grant thinks it's cute. <laughs> See, I knew it. I, I wasn't alone on that. 2.5 centimeters in length. That's like... Tiny. You can hold that on like two fingers, just like that. I hope we get some big suckers in here too. Yeah, we're gonna get some big beasts. All right, next we've got Praia Dubia. What is this? It looks like Christmas lights. Yeah, they look like string lights in someone's like redone backyard. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, these things have gotta be so long. Oh, they're like a sea vine. <laughs> that is crazy. 
What the fuck? It literally just looked like a line from far away, but it also seems to have some sort of little uh, feelers on them or something. Yeah. My guess is these things are either poisonous or invasive, like the invasive land plants that are like yeah. carnivorous plants, but not carnivorous. Virginia creepers. Yeah. All right, let's see. Found from Iceland in the North Atlantic to Chile in the South Pacific, a colony of tiny biological components called zooids, <laughs> each having evolved with a specific function. Zooids cannot survive on their own, relying on symbiosis in order for a complete Praia Dubia specimen to survive. They can grow up to 160 feet in length. This is a true hive mind species here. Wow, it really is. Yeah. yeah. Praia Dubia is an active swimmer that attracts its prey with bright blue light. It deploys a curtain of tentacles which produce a powerful toxic string that can paralyze or kill prey that happen to bump into it. Their diet includes gelatinous sea life, <laughs> small crustaceans, and small fish. Wow. Oh my gosh, so it really eats things. Yeah, like catches them, it snares them. Yeah, toxic toxic stings them and stuns them mm -hmm. and then consumes them. That is messed up. That is so cool. Could a human get snared in one of these? I don't know, to be honest. I'm sure it's happened before. They're so long. Yeah, 160 feet. Yeah. I'm sure one would fuck yeah. you up. It's like a, a jellyfish orgy <laughs> or something. Next, we got one I'm familiar with. Here we go. The mantis shrimp. Now this fucker packs a punch. And this is a coveted pet. You can get a mantis shrimp as a pet. I actually only know that for an embarrassing reason. It's that Logan Paul really wanted one. Uh, and so they were trying to get him one for his birthday. It was like a whole thing. They just had shrimp con. Shrimp con? Yeah, they have an American like shrimp competition where like you people breed little tiny shrimps and they try and make them super beautiful. Wow. It's like a shrimp beauty pageant. It's low key. Oh my gosh, some people dedicate their whole lives to shrimp. Oh yeah, just like Dr. Mantis. Dr. Mantis? Like, he's the one who discovered the shrimp. No, he's not. Mm -hmm. Really? He's also the guy who invented pina coladas. Really? <laughs> he invented pina coladas. The guy who found the mantis shrimp also invented pina coladas. Look it up, or don't. I don't, I don't give a shit. And is he alive? No. Well, I'm praying for Mantis's family then. <laughs> He oh really, my gosh. He smacked the shit out of that clam. <laughs> yeah, he's punching a clam. Don't these things, like, if it was the size of a person, couldn't this, like, punch through a car? Yeah, people were saying that if it was human size and the strength scale, they could punch a basketball into orbit. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So it's like the boxing animal. It's unbelievably powerful. That's, like, the whole thing about ants. Like, yeah. the way ants can carry, like, huge things. They're, like, they could carry trains and shit yeah. like that. Well, let's read some more about them. All right. They are found in tropical and subtropical waters in the Indian and Pacific Oceans between Eastern Africa. Africa and Hawaii has a 50 mile per hour claw punch, which is one of the fastest attacks in the animal kingdom. Wow. 50 mph? That is over the speed limit in a lot of subreddit residential areas. <laughs> subreddit <laughs> so areas too. <laughs> they feed on gastropods or octopi, crabs and mollusks. Mantis shrimps have a wide growth range of two to seven inches. I've got nothing to say about that. That's a wide length, I guess. It's only five inch difference. Yeah, so there's growers and showers basically. You are really sensitive about the length there's of these There's growers <laughs> and showers, man. I get it, it's but. Sometimes there's growers and sometimes there's showers. Man. You're, this thing can punch 50 miles an hour and you were obsessed with the length of it. Okay, but we got past the punch part. We talked about it. Basketball into orbit. Got it. Can punch through a truck. Who cares? I'm not obsessed with violence, okay? But the length is what you're fixating on. It's funny. Five inches good length for a shrimp? It's fine. It's workable. Five inches is like, it's a boyfriend shrimp. Can you even call it a shrimp if it's seven inches though? <laughs> <laughs> Next one, Christmas tree worm. <laughs> This has got to have a scientific name. <laughs> Christmas tree worm? Catholicism has gone too far this time. Where's the menorah worm? Where's the Quanta crab? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Let's see these things, I don't know, sway maybe? <laughs> oh, they expand. Look at them open like that. What the no way. fuck is go- Whoa! Uh, oh, they're scared. They go away. Is that guy trying to tickle those worms? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, he's trying to tickle some worms. <laughs> Dr. Worm Tickler here. <laughs> Gucci Gucci. <laughs> they absolutely collapse back into the ground when anything gets near them. That's cool. Very fast. And they do look like Christmas trees, or at least my Christmas trees, because there's no presents under them. Just a fucking tree in the house. All right, so these things live in the tropical coral reefs around the world. Each worm has two crowns that resembles the appearance of a Christmas tree. They use these appendages for breathing and feeding on microscopic plants. Ugh. Upon birth, a larva selects a coral. It constructs a calcium carbonate tube that remains its permanent home throughout its lifespan. Their tubes can develop between eight and 10 inches in length. It's huge. That's pretty big. <laughs> hey, hey, that's, that's a hog. That's movie size. Yep, that's professional size. Yeah. <laughs> that ain't a worm, that's a snake. Yeah. <laughs> and the worms produce them by excreting calcium carbonate obtained from ingesting sand particles. I hate the word excreting. Yeah, excreting is not good. And Just calcium. Ugh. Damn larva. These things are cool though. They do come in twos. I like that. Yeah. yeah. It's like a buddy comedy. It's a buddy system. Yeah. Now we got frogfish. This doesn't make any sense. What the fuck? It looks like Jabba the Hutt or something. Yeah. What the hell is going on? If this thing doesn't croak, I'm gonna be pissed. Oh my uh, gosh. What? Ew. Whoa, is that an eye? Yeah. Oh, there's fish near him. Oh, they, oh, oh. they tried to bite him. He did, he sucked one in. Oh my gosh, that's like a swamp monster peacock situation. <laughs> I don't even know what that looks like. It kind of looks like a Furby. Yeah, it looks hairy. Why does it need all the extra, you know, does that make it look like coral so it sneaks up on shit? I don't know, it looks like a Scooby-Doo villain. Or do you ever like drop your silly putty on the carpet as a kid? Yep, and it got like lint on it and Dog stuff. hair. Yeah. Cocaine. Mids. Mids, yeah. <laughs> this is a disgusting creature. I don't know why it's called a frog fish. You know what I mean? It doesn't resemble a frog or a fish. In Maybe it hops. We'll read about them. All right, the frogfish live in a tropical and subtropical oceans and seas off the coasts of Africa, Asia, Australia, and North America. So they're everywhere. Frogfish are popular, that's cool. Unlike many animals that use their camouflage to hide from predators, they use theirs to attract predators. Whoa. They are carnivorous and they eat fish, crustaceans, and even other frogfish. They're cannibals. <laughs> and they use their modified fins to walk and trot on the ocean floor. <laughs> oh, they're little tr Trotters. They're trotters. They're trotting about. And they grow up to a foot in length. Now that is a dangerous size. We're not even gonna talk about that. No, I mean, it's 12 inches. How do they eat other frogfish? They look big and like meaty and weird. I feel like tons of fish are cannibalistic. Yeah, I just mean like physically, their mouths. Like a full grown one will eat a baby. Okay, that you makes sense, me? yeah, totally. Like especially one he didn't want. Right. Maybe he was just in his party boy phase and he wasn't ready to settle down. <laughs> sucks up his own son. I mean, that kind of shit is cool in the animal kingdom, but like not cool on this realm. Can't do that in rural Ohio, I'll tell you that. Next, sea swallow. Frogfish, sea swallow. Why do they name everything in the ocean after stuff on the land? Yeah, <laughs> that's what I don't get either. It seems very narcissistic. It's yeah, like, you don't discover a bird and go like, oh, it's a bass pigeon. <laughs> it's snail deer, because it's slow. This one looks like a Pokemon. Yes. And it looks like a legendary Pokemon. And he guesses on the size before we get there. I'm gonna guess wingspan, eight inches. I think they're gonna be little guys. They're swallow. Yeah, I'm going even smaller. I'm yeah. gonna say like two to four inches. What are they even doing? Are they like attached to it? Oh! Oh, oh yeah, they're tiny. I can already tell from that. Oh yeah. Nature's production. <laughs> Shout out to them. Uh, this looks like it would be a trendy lower back tattoo. <laughs> it does. <laughs> you know what I mean? It does. Like, oh, she's got a sea swallow on her back. I want to talk to her. <laughs> sea swallows are found throughout the Atlantic, Pacific, and Indian Oceans in temperate and tropical waters. They feed on venomous animals such as Portuguese man o' war. No. Is that one coming later? <laughs> because I cannot believe there's anything called the Portuguese man o' war. Probably named after the famous racing horse. <laughs> Portuguese man o' war coming around. The Man of War was a famous racing horse. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Oh, see, I don't know enough about horses. I think the horse was named after a ship, though. The Man of War. Gosh, they gotta come up with new names. Stop yeah. just naming stuff after other stuff. Hey, that's the movie industry, too. They also store the energy of their prey in the tips of their appendages and are not safe for humans to touch. What do you mean, store the energy? So they, like, absorb the souls of their <laughs> prey and put them on their fingertips? And why are they Why are they using dead animals so that that's where they they put their babies. They're like, oh, this one's dead. Let's shit eggs all over it. <laughs> 
It's like a new nest for their babies, I guess. That's fucked up. Yeah, it is really messed up. It's like if you killed somebody and... No, I can't never... I can't even... <laughs> Game on. Yeah, you yeah, know, I... Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, 1.2 inches long. So even you were overestimating these things. It's a respectable size, though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and you did put a picture of the Portuguese man of war here. Mm, I did. See, I don't get, I don't get it. That thing looks like something that would be even more expensive at the head shop. <laughs> All right, Leafy Sea Dragon. <laughs> We're continuing with the trend. This is actually named after something that may or may not even exist. <laughs> this looks like someone I met at Electric Forest. <laughs> you know when you go into a really, really wealthy person's house and they have like decorations that you're kind of just like, <laughs> where'd you even get that? Yeah. This looks like one of those. Yeah, and it would be in like bronze. And it'd be actually a Leafy Sea Dragon. It'd be one that they took out of the ocean and they have it. Petrified. Know? Oh yeah. Oh my god. It is literally like a seahorse with extra stuff. Oh there it comes. It's in there. Whoa. No, these things are beautiful. I don't know. I think they're beautiful. They do kind of look like the produce section a little bit. Yeah. You know? <laughs> but at the same time, they also look like what a seahorse would evolve into if it were a Pokemon. Oh, sea stallion. I'm a big fan of these things. I like this. This is beautiful. It does look like a, a food someone would tell you is really good for you that you'll never eat. Yeah. You eat it one time and you're like, it's not mm, worth it. No. I'm getting chicken wings. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The leafy sea dragon is found in the coastal waters of southern and western Australia. The leafy sea dragon eats small shrimp and plankton by sucking them up in its mouth tube. It has a mouth tube. <laughs> they grow to be about 17 inches in length. Yeah. Probably about that size. Yeah, we're kind of getting out of the yeah. territory where we can talk about it that way. Sure. It's getting kind of like, <laughs> uh -huh. it's getting kind of like inhuman. Huh? Unlike seahorses, male sea dragons don't have a pouch. I was going to ask that yeah. because that's one of my favorite things about the seahorse family is that the men carry the babies. And they have little, they have little joeys. Yeah, it's basically. beautiful. Is there something to do with the pouches and being from Australia? Did that like come out of the water? Oh, interesting. <laughs> Did yeah. the seahorse walk out of the water and eventually evolve into a kangaroo? Something to look into there. <laughs> The sea dragon doesn't have a pouch. Instead, the male sea dragon carries the eggs on the underside of its tail in a broad patch that develops as mating season approaches. Whoa. And it delivers oxygen-rich blood to the cup-like tissue. Oh. So just like the seahorses, the males do carry the babies. Yes, but instead in a brood patch <laughs> in, under its tail. <laughs> I wish we had a mating season. Oh, like a specific time? Yeah, you know what I mean? Like this guy grows something on his body when it's mating season, and then <laughs> he knows to go out and mate. I think that would be bad for humanity. It would be like the purge. It would feel very, it would be rough. It'd be like everybody's just on demon time. Everybody gets a mustache. <laughs> no way. <laughs> no pig butt worm? Why is it a pig butt worm? It looks like a pig's ass. It does look like an ass. Pigs have pronounced asses. They haven't pronounced anything. They can't even speak English. That's not true. What do you mean? Have you ever read Farmville or whatever? That is not, that's an app. Um... Farmhouse. Barnyard. Animal house? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Those pigs were commies, remember? Oh my gosh. I wish it made a fart noise. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what are these things? What the fuck is going on in the ocean, what? bro? Why do they put this shit down there? <laughs> oh, they caught, oh, it. caught they it. it in a little jar. <laughs> <laughs> they, got a, they got pig butt worm in a jar. I hate this one. Yeah. Why is it a worm? <laughs> yeah, there's nothing about it that's worm-like. It just drifts around. Like, it's a little fleshy ass that floats throughout the ocean. It looks like a scene from Xenon. <laughs> I never saw it. You never saw Xenon, Fuck Girl no. of the 21st Century? I wasn't allowed to watch that. <laughs> they were very wrong about the 21st Century, I'll tell you that much. Really? Yeah, it's nothing like that. There's no space stations and... Oh, there were boy bands, though. There was a boy band in that movie called Protozoa. <laughs> All right, time to read about the pig butt worm. The pig butt worm or flying buttocks. <laughs> they should have just stuck with that, actually. That makes more sense. <laughs> they reside just below the oxygen minimum zone between 3,000 and 4,000 feet deep. They are believed to feed by surrounding their mouths with a cloud of mucus, which which catches particles of food in marine snow. So marine snow is like sediment that kind of blows through the wind of the ocean, I guess. <laughs> yes. And then they have <laughs> mucus around their mouth to catch those little particles. Like me after I eat a rack of ribs. <laughs> <laughs> They're no bigger than the size of a chestnut. It's not a unit of measurement. I know, that's funny. All the other ones have inches and stuff, and this one's just, hey, you guys know a chestnut, right? <laughs> Everyone It doesn't knows. get bigger than that. <laughs> so it's a small butt. But hey, small asses matter too. Not to me. Really? Big butt guy. Everybody's got their preference. 
And mine's the pig butt worm. Next, oh my gosh, the snipe eel. Let's go, this used to be my old gamer tag. Snipe eel? Snipe eel, 666. <laughs> I was hoping there'd be an eel in here. Eels are amazing. Yeah, you're a big eel fan. Big, big eel fan. I want there to be a pro sports team named the eels. I was gonna say the same thing. Yeah, it'd be awesome. It's like definitely a missed opportunity. The Seattle eels. It's a little bit of a mouthful. Seals. No, no, don't change that. Uh, I'm saying different town, maybe. Um, Albuquerque eels. Yes, that works. How's that less of a mouthful? Seattle eels. Ol eels. Going, Too many e's. Yeah, yeah. Albuquerque eels. The Austin eels. Austin eels. There definitely needs to be a pro sports team there. The industry is bumping. I mean, check out Rogan and his gang of misfits. Liberals hate sports, though. Well, there's not a lot of liberals left there anymore. They all did too many mushrooms and listened to too much JRE, and now they're kind of on the other side of things somehow. Yeah, that's true. You, yeah. can, you can go full three. They've really been putting the South back in South by Southwest. I'll say that much. Oh, yeah. Whoa. It's kind of like a swordfish. It's beautiful. With like an anglerfish eye. I'm guessing these things are real deep. Gotta be. <sighs> oh, man. Look at the motion on that thing. <laughs> <laughs> that is so cool. That is sweet. Why is its mouth like little chopsticks, though? Yeah, it does have a little chopstick mouth. It doesn't make sense. Uh -huh. Our snipe eel lives in temperate to tropical waters and lives around 10,000 feet in the ocean. Yep. You couldn't even count to 10 if I paid you, let alone 10,000. Well, how much? 10,000. That's how much you're going to give me? Yeah, I'll give you a dollar for every one you count. I honestly don't really know how much that is, so I don't know if it's like a big, in big enough incentive for me. It has a permanently ajar mouth with teeth that angle in towards itself and primarily feeds on shrimp. Oh, so it's always like this, but the teeth go in so that if it does catch something, they can't swim out. Oh. oh. I think anglerfish are similar in that way. They have like a trap mouth, yeah. basically. Snipe eels range between four to five feet in length. They currently hold the record for the most backbones in the animal kingdom at 750 bones. 750 bones? That's so weird. I mean, how does like a blue whale have less backbones? They're bigger. The, the bones, bones are bigger. bigger. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The bones so, are bigger. So this guy's got 750 little bones. Little. That's yeah. messed up. 750 bones. That's how much I paid for Dave Matthews Band tickets. <laughs> Worth every penny. It bro. was, honestly. I mean, look at the drum kit. It's got so many toms on it. Yeah, it's like 50 pieces. <laughs> Which is your favorite creature in here? My three favorites are definitely the glass octopus, the sea swallow, and the leafy sea dragon. Mm -hmm. Those are my three favorites. I like beautiful creatures. Yeah. <laughs> I like that eel. I like the hive mind chain, kind of like the hive mind copes chain. Which we have available on Cope's website, which is linked in description, yeah. coincidentally. Yeah, it's just kind of weird so, how that yeah, worked out. Exactly. And the glastopus. Yeah, the glastopus is yeah. really cool. Mm -hmm. I would get that on like a shirt or something. Like if it had like a picture of it, and then like it said glass octopus, and then had some facts about it, so people could kind of read my shirt and learn. Uh -huh. On the back, maybe the facts are. No, they're on the front. Mm -hmm. Everything's on the front. See, that's too much. There's nothing should be on the back of a shirt ever, in my opinion. <laughs> Why don't they make t-shirts with pouches? They do. It's just hella ugly. It's like really ugly. H&M was doing it for a while. While really? People do it. It sucks. Don't do it. Don't. I like it. Yeah, well, hey, you could start it. T-shirts and two breast pockets. Marsupial T-shirt company. Don't put that in. What? I want to keep that idea. Sure. Not, not really. You can keep in this part where I'm telling you not to keep it in. Oh. What? And then you can put that in. Because then it would be like a joke. I'm so confused. Yeah. Me too. This is why you shouldn't edit the videos, you know. Edit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that was 10 sea creatures we've never seen before in our entire lives. I had seen the mantis shrimp. Low key. I had seen that one. E either way, <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the first educational Hive Mind Unlimited <laughs> video. This is just something we thought of and we're like, why not? Yeah, we got to do it. We should have done like 40. Yeah, we should have done a bunch of them. But if you want us to do this again or have another suggestion in this vein, let us know down in the comments. Let us know if you enjoyed it. Make sure you like the video, subscribe, all the stuff I did did not say at the beginning of the video. And Graydon, do you want to leave these wonderful people some advice to leave or live their lives by? If you get mud on your spoon, you can always harpoon your way out of it. That made no sense. All right, this has been High Bite Unlimited. We love you, we appreciate you, and we'll see you in the next video. The Critters! Where'd you get that? No? <laughs> Easy now. <laughs> Basketball, you know, a little mini hoop. <laughs> <laughs>